Don't be fooled by this beautiful and innocent looking woman. In the next moment, she pushed her companion into a deep pit surrounded by a group of giant lizards. The woman cruelly watched as the man was slowly devoured by the lizards. This was a real-life version of the game player unknown's battlegrounds, where no one could be trusted. Even close companions were not exempt. The only person you could trust was yourself. Just a day ago, Himiko was an ordinary high school girl. But after finishing a game one night, she found herself stranded on a deserted island. She noticed a bag next to her filled with explosives. She didn't know what to do. She fell asleep just thinking about it. When she opened her eyes again, she saw three unfamiliar men in front of her. Himiko immediately became alert. One of the men told her not to be nervous, and introduced himself as Tanaka. He wanted to invite Himiko to join his team, and survive together on the island. They were all players caught up in this escape game, each carrying a bag with explosives. However, this impromptu team was far from harmonious often arguing due to differences in opinions. Suddenly, a plane appeared in the sky. Dropping a supply drop to the ground, they hurriedly rushed over and discovered a box filled with food. The three of them started eating hungrily. Upon returning, Tanaka saw the scene and scolded them loudly. At that moment, Hayato, standing nearby, took out a knife and killed Tanaka right in front of Himiko. Himiko was petrified by this sight. Hayato's act of madness Kenta felt the danger and he woke Himiko up before dawn. He urged Himiko to gather supplies and prepare to escape. Himiko thought Kenta was right. Soon, the two of them took all the explosives and food with them. However, while resting, Kenta accidentally triggered the radar device on his hand. Meanwhile, Hayato was rapidly closing in on them. Kenta runs and explains how to use the radar. And soon Himiko successfully activated hers too. Hayato was getting closer and closer. The two of them dared not stop and reached a suspension bridge. At that moment, Hayato caught up with them. Seeing Hayato getting closer, Kenta grabbed his own bomb and threw it. Each person's bomb had a different effect. Kenta's bomb released a large amount of corrosive gas. After successfully escaping from Hayato, Kenta had evil thoughts about Himiko's body. He immediately embraced her and rubbed his face against her body in a frenzy. Himiko had no choice but to headbutt his chin and seize the opportunity to break free. However, Kenta had no intention of giving up. In a panic, Himiko pulled out a stun gun, and the powerful electric shock rendered Kenta unconscious. Himiko hides alone in the corner. However, Kenta quickly regained consciousness and used the radar to locate her position. He pushed Himiko down, and with a single blow, he knocked the stun gun away. Now. Himiko was completely trapped in Kenta's clutches. Just as Kenta pulled down his pants for his next move, Himiko activated the bomb he had in his pocket. She wants to die with him. Seeing this, Kenta can't even lift his pants before he runs away. But Himiko threw the bomb at him directly. The intense explosion killed Kenta instantly. At this moment, Himiko felt no guilt in her heart. Being able to defend herself with a weapon made her feel proud. From now on, she would never trust anyone again especially the men on this island. However, just then, another man suddenly appeared on the other side of the river. His name was Ryota. He spent his days indulging in online games. That day, his mother wanted him to work at a noodle shop. But Ryota was very annoyed with him. He yelled at her to get out of the room. So his mother made a deal with a mysterious organization. When Ryota came out of the convenience store, two men in black found him. When he opened his eyes again, he found himself on a deserted island. He tried to use his phone for help but realized there was no signal. He also discovered a gem-like object embedded in his hand. After surveying his surroundings, he found a white bag and decided to leave the jungle. Then he discovered something even more desperate. This is a deserted island in the middle of nowhere. Luckily, there was a lunch box in his backpack. Inside the white bag were eight small cubes. Ryota accidentally pressed a button on them. A countdown timer started on the block-like object. Ryota immediately threw the cube away, realizing that the bag was filled with timed explosives. Just then, a figure appeared in the distance. Ryota waved his hands and called for help. But to his surprise, the person pulled out a bomb. Caught off guard, Ryota was knocked over by the explosion's impact. The familiar scene made him feel like he was in the game he used to play. Could it be that he had joined a real-life version of the wilderness survival game? Ryota surrendered, hoping the man with blonde hair would spare his life. But all he received in return was another bomb. 
With the force of the explosion and the smoke rising, Ryota disappeared from the blonde-haired man's sight. At that moment, he suddenly realized, he seemed to be able to sense the yellow-haired man's position, then the other side can also know his position, his mind quickly analyzed the types of bombs both of them possessed. The man's bomb exploded upon contact with objects, while Ryota's was a 10-second timed bomb. With this in mind, Ryota came up with a strategy. He shouted loudly and ran out, then jumped into the sea. As expected, the blonde-haired man chased after him. However, the man was unaware that Ryota had already activated a timed bomb. As the explosion echoed, numerous debris, along with the man's body, fell into the sea. The experience of killing someone for the first time left Ryota feeling extremely uncomfortable. He vomited everything he had eaten in the afternoon. After this battle, Ryota also obtained the touch-activated bomb from the blonde-haired man. Exhausted, he quickly fell asleep. When he woke up, the first thing he saw was a girl. At the sight of the girl's beautiful face and sexy figure, Ryota couldn't help but take a step forward. The girl, like a frightened deer, quickly protected herself, then swiftly packed her belongings into a box, and immediately left the place. By the time Ryota crossed the river, the girl had already disappeared without a trace. At this point, Ryota remembered the radar device in his hand. After activating the radar to scan his surroundings, there was a quick response in front, but the response was somewhat weak. Suddenly, the bushes in front of him rustled. Ryota, holding a bomb, immediately charged over, only to find a middle-aged man in the middle of relieving himself. He quickly indicated his surrender, promising not to resist. The man's name was Haikai. Like Ryota, he was also forced to participate in this desert island game. Upon learning that Ryota couldn't remember what happened in the airplane cabin, Haikai told him the reason. It turns out that they were all taken by men in black to an airplane a day earlier. The dozens of people on the plane were all players who were captured to participate in a survival game. Then, a man appeared on the screen in front of everyone, explaining the rules of the game. The airplane would drop them off on an island in the Pacific, where there was no food or water. The only way to go home was to pass the game. Everyone would receive a type of bomb and battle with other people. There were eight types of bombs in total. In addition, a chip had been implanted in each person's hand. The chip had the function of sensing the location of other players. There were only two ways to remove the chip, either by surgery, or when the heart stops beating. If they want to pass the level and get out of here, they had to collect eight chips. In other words, they had to kill at least seven people. At that time, Ryota stood up to resist. As a result, he was stunned and passed out the next second. This was the reason why Ryota lost his memory. After listening to Haikai's story, Ryota was deep in thought. Why did the rules of this game match exactly with the online game he used to play on his computer? At that moment, Haikai invited Ryota to join him. Ryota hesitated for a moment but eventually agreed to team up with him. Just then, the airplane started dropping supply crates. With agility, Ryota rushed ahead and reached one of the crates first. The organizers intentionally used these conspicuous airdrops to create a scenario where people would fight each other over food supplies. As expected, a woman fell victim to a trap set by others and was instantly blown up. Scenes like this unfolded at almost every airdrop location. The risk of death accompanied the struggle for food. However, survival was impossible without sustenance. In light of this, the two of them decided to set off for another airdrop location. At this moment, the male protagonist, Ryota, wants to explore the situation by following the river and use radar to detect nearby enemies. Little did he know, he encountered the same girl from before, Himiko. Himiko also sensed his presence. The bomb in her hand has already been activated. It explodes loudly in the air. It's not that Himiko threw it in the wrong direction. The bomb releases a highly corrosive gas that dissolves anything it touches. Ryota hurriedly escapes from the area, but by the time he gets out, Himiko is already standing behind him. Ryota also notices the luxurious equipment on Himiko. Clearly spoils of war, Ryota quickly assures her that he means no harm and asks Himiko to put down the bomb. However, Himiko doesn't drop the bomb. Instead, she activates the switch. Ryota quickly starts explaining and extends an invitation for cooperation to Himiko. If Himiko isn't interested, he will leave. Himiko finally calms down and deactivates the bomb in her hand, and Ryota breathes a sigh of relief. But as he approaches Himiko, she activates the bomb again. Her previous experiences have made her unable to trust anyone. Fortunately, 
Himiko throws the bomb off target. Ryota seizes the opportunity and charges straight at her. Himiko agilely dodges Ryota and quickly pulls out her stun gun. Acting on instinct, Ryota kicks out, and the stun gun accidentally zaps Himiko herself. Himiko is directly stunned and falls unconscious. This dramatic turn of events relieved Ryota's tension, to prevent Himiko from attacking him again. He had to remove the equipment from her first. Then, Ryota carried Himiko and made his way back. By this time, Himiko had regained consciousness, but she was still weak from being stunned. In reality, Ryota only wanted to take her to a safe place, but he didn't expect Himiko to react so extreme. She pulled out a bomb from her pocket and activated it. In order not to be violated, she was going to die with Ryota. However, the bomb didn't explode. In the last second, Ryota managed to stop the bomb by pressing the switch. Himiko, in despair, shed tears. Finally, Ryota brought her to a safe place, where Haikai kindly offered a cup of hot coffee. Himiko slowly took the coffee but couldn't hold back her tears. Haikai comforted her, assuring her that they wouldn't do anything inappropriate to her and that they had no intention of participating in this twisted game. They decided to find other ways to leave the island and invited Himiko to join them. Unexpectedly, Himiko vetoed their proposal, stating that even if they went back, they couldn't return to their original place. They were all chosen by the people around them to disappear, and that's why they were brought here. Ryota refused to believe Himiko's words. It turns out that Himiko was told to her face that the people around her were united in their desire to make her disappear. This reminded Ryota of his own terrible behavior towards his mother, causing him to fall into confusion. Suddenly, there was a commotion in the surrounding jungle, and Ryota immediately became alert. He used the radar to detect the area but got no response. Haikai quickly picked up a flashlight and shone it, revealing several pairs of red glowing eyes. Clearly, they were not human, they had to leave as soon as possible, but Himiko's body is still paralyzed. Ryota could only support Himiko and help her up. At that moment, several giant lizards emerged. The three of them hurriedly retreated into the river, but their supplies were surrounded by the giant lizards. Ryota instructed Haikai to take Himiko to the other side of the river while he went to retrieve the bomb. Ryota picked up a stone and threw it at the lizards, scaring them away. He quickly took out the bomb from his bag. Meanwhile, Haikai's leg had been severely bitten by one of the lizards. In the nick of time, a bomb kills the lizards. However, Haikai's leg was severely injured, and there was no time to stop the bleeding. Due to the pursuing giant lizards, they had to find a safe spot. Ryota carried the unconscious Himiko on his back, while the injured Haikai carried all the supplies. Just then, a giant lizard charged towards them. Ryota managed to escape to the surface with Himiko on his back, but he became separated from Haikai. Immediately, Ryota used the radar to locate Haikai, but there was no response. Suddenly, Ryota realized something. All their supplies were with Haikai. Perhaps he had taken the supplies and hidden himself, completely abandoning them. Ryota couldn't believe it. He continuously tried to use the radar for searching, but still no response. Ryota completely broke down. At that moment, the sound of crawling approached again, and Ryota became instantly alert. Soon, a giant lizard emerged. But then, a miniature bomb suddenly appeared. It was Haikai who had caught up to them. Haikai had been searching for them all along, and it was the interference between their radars that caused the lack of communication. Ryota felt a sense of relief and apologized for misunderstanding him earlier. Haikai completely understood Ryota's state of mind. Acknowledging that such thoughts were easy to develop in this environment, the three of them continued to search for a safe refuge. Finally, they found an abandoned building that could serve as a temporary shelter. The two of them supported Himiko as they climbed up together. However, the rusty and weathered iron ladder couldn't bear the weight of all three of them and broke directly. At the same time, a large number of giant lizards approached. Haikai decided to buy them some time and urged Ryota to climb up with Himiko first. However, the corroded iron ladder probably wouldn't withstand the weight of two people either. Ryota found himself in a dilemma, and Haikai's lock-on miniature bomb had minimal destructive power. Unable to hold off for long, Ryota desperately tried to wake Himiko, but she showed no response. Meanwhile, Haikai was also reaching his limit and wanted to turn back to see if they had climbed up. However, he witnessed Ryota climbing alone while leaving Himiko behind on the ground. Haikai could hardly believe it. Ryota, at that moment, appeared unusually calm and indifferent. Was he really planning to survive alone? Ignoring Haikai's reproach, Ryota's eyes suddenly became sharp. He threw the corrosive gas bomb that Himiko had in her possession. Just a moment ago, he had tested the wind direction, and they wouldn't be affected by the smoke. 
The terrain here coupled with the gas bomb was simply perfect. At that moment, Himiko slowly regained consciousness, although the three of them were safe now. Haikai's leg needed immediate treatment. Ryota went out to fetch some water and took the opportunity to assess the surroundings. It seemed unlikely that the giant lizards would dare to approach again. Just then, Himiko wanted to come down from the upper level. The sight left Ryota dumbfounded. Himiko quickly noticed his inappropriate behavior and questioned him. She asked if he had done anything inappropriate while she was unconscious. The scene replayed in Ryota's mind, causing him to blush. Himiko could already guess the answer from his expression. Ryota wanted to explain further, but as soon as he touched Himiko's shoulder, she went crazy, with memories of her past ordeal flooding back into her mind. Clearly, that incident had left a severe psychological trauma on Himiko. Afterwards, Ryota helped Haikai treat his wounds, and once everything was taken care of, the two of them relaxed. Ryota didn't fully understand Himiko's experience, but judging from the equipment she carried, it was evident that she had killed three or four people, so Ryota demanded that Himiko explain her story clearly, or else he would have to ask her to leave. He didn't want someone so ruthless and cold-hearted by his side. However, Himiko had no intention of mentioning that incident. As the two of them faced off, they suddenly sensed someone conducting radar searches. It happened that Himiko was detected by the other party. Himiko decided to leave alone because she didn't want to bring trouble to them. But Ryota stopped her. The other party only sensed Himiko's presence, not theirs. They could take advantage of this opportunity for a counterattack. Ryota prepared to take the initiative, but he was attacked as soon as he used the radar to investigate. So Ryota took out a bomb to retaliate, while the two sides were in a stalemate. A bomb suddenly landed at Ryota's feet. It turned out that there was more than one person on the other side. Hayato took the opportunity to rush over, knocking Ryota down and stepping on him. Natsum suggested killing Ryota directly, but Ryota took advantage of the distraction and pulled out an electric shock gun, stunning Natsum on the ground. Ryota seized the opportunity to escape into the jungle, and Hayato didn't immediately pursue him. He knew Ryota had companions, and he wanted to hunt down more prey. Ryota finally managed to escape and return, but Hayato also tracked him down. Hayato was originally a mercenary, and tracking prey in the jungle was a piece of cake for him. Even with the three of them together, they were no match for Hayato. Haikai had his fingers cut off, and Ryota was knocked off a cliff. Fortunately, he landed on a tree branch. When Ryota returned, he found that only Haikai was left, and all their supplies and Himiko were taken away. At that moment, Ryota found Himiko's dropped phone. When he opened it, he discovered that Himiko's online username was the same as his in-game wife's name, whether it was the same person or not. Regardless, Ryota decided to rescue Himiko alone. Meanwhile, Himiko was already tied to the iron bed. They wanted to force her to hand over the chips, or else subject her to inhumane torture. However, Himiko didn't have any chips on her because all the chips were kept by Haikai. Suddenly, a radar signal indicated Ryota's arrival nearby. Himiko sent two radar signals in succession. Hayato ordered Natsum to confront Ryota from the front while he launched a surprise attack from the left. However, they waited for a long time and didn't see Ryota appear. Both of them hurriedly used the radar to detect, but there was no sign of Ryota. Ryota maintained a still position, not revealing his location. He quietly sneaked in and found the approximate location where Himiko's radar signal was coming from. However, just as he was about to open the door, a bomb suddenly dropped from above the door. Ryota quickly caught it and swiftly deactivated the switch. He felt a sense of relief, but he now had an extra bomb in his possession. He knew he had to use this one bomb to create a miracle. Soon, he found Himiko, who was tied to the bed. Ryota helped her untie the ropes and asked for her in-game name. After receiving Himiko's answer, Ryota revealed his own in-game name. Himiko was greatly surprised. She couldn't believe that the man in front of her was her in-game husband. However, she didn't admit it and simply said that she had heard of his name in the game. Ryota felt a bit disappointed but didn't find it strange since many people played that game. As they walked out, the opponent had already detected them. Natsum excitedly rushed towards them, continuously throwing bombs at Ryota. Ryota could only flee frantically. At this point, Natsum had already descended into a frenzy and didn't realize that Ryota was luring him. Suddenly, a bomb dropped from the sky. Although it took out Natsum, Hayato managed to grab Himiko and arrogantly threw away his knife, challenging Ryota to a one-on-one -on -one fight. Clearly, Hayato didn't know Ryota's location. Ryota seized the opportunity, picked up a knife from the ground, 
and quickly retreated, but Hayato reacted even faster and kicked him several meters away. Despite having the knife, Ryota was still no match for Hayato and was soon overpowered. At this critical moment, Himiko leaped towards them but was quickly thrown aside. It was then that Himiko urged Ryota to run. It turns out that Himiko had placed a bomb on Hayato when she jumped on him. By the time Hayato realized it, it was too late. However, this bomb happened to be a corrosive gas bomb. Himiko and Ryota had to escape as quickly as possible, but they were faced with a dead end ahead. The toxic gas and smoke were also closing in from behind. It was then that Ryota noticed a ventilation duct above them. Just as Ryota was about to pull Himiko up, a bloody hand grabbed her leg. It turned out that Hayato wasn't dead. His body was grotesquely corroded by the gas. Ryota activated the timed bomb he had in his hand and threw it down without knowing why Hayato tried to pick it up. Perhaps the gas had driven him mad. The two who had just narrowly escaped were now exhausted, they decided to spend the night there. Unable to sleep, they started chatting, Himiko said she should be more grateful to him. Because Ryota rushed over to save her, Ryota self-deprecatingly shared his past, admitting that he was a recluse in reality, only immersed in online games. Perhaps in the game world, he was his true self. It was until a girl appeared and he developed emotions in the virtual world, he had thought Himiko was his in-game wife, but he mistook her for someone else. Seeing no response from Himiko, Ryota assumed she had fallen asleep, unaware that she was actually sobbing uncontrollably. She was truly touched. Himiko was in a daze, seemingly in a dream world. Then a bright light shone on her face. When she opened her eyes, a horrifying face appeared before her. Himiko's scream startled Ryota awake. She recounted what she had just seen. Ryota rushed to check the surrounding area with his radar, but he didn't sense anything out of the ordinary. However, Himiko was certain that she hadn't had a nightmare. At that moment, Ryota noticed a distant light. He instructed Himiko to stay put while he went to investigate. When Ryota entered the room, he found it empty. Suddenly, he felt that something was amiss. Just then, a figure wielding a sickle swung it towards him. Ryota narrowly dodged the attack. The assailant immediately swung again but got the sickle stuck in a wooden table. Taking advantage of the opportunity, Ryota kicked the person down, only to discover that it was a woman. The reason the radar didn't detect her was because her palm, which had a chip embedded in it, had been severed. On the other hand, Himiko remained in the pitch black environment, trembling in fear. At this time, Ryota also hurried back. Following this, the two of them arrived at the place where the woman resided. The woman slowly regained consciousness. However, when she saw Ryota, she went into a frenzy, screaming for Ryota to get out. Clearly, she too was filled with hatred and fear towards men. After Ryota left, the woman calmed down and warned Himiko not to trust any man. But after everything that Himiko had been through, she chose to trust Ryota. The woman didn't say much more. Instead, she began to tell Himiko her own story. Her name was Keiko. She used to be a nurse. But during one operation, the doctor she admired was involved in a medical accident. To protect the reputation of the doctor, she secretly altered the patient records. Yet, the doctor pushed all the blame onto her, resulting in her dismissal and condemnation from the public. Afterwards, she was taken to this deserted island by a mysterious person. To her surprise, that same doctor was also brought to the island. Under his sweet talk, she chose to forgive the doctor, and together, they began collecting chips. But when they had collected six chips, the doctor showed his true colors. Because with Keiko's chip, he could leave the deserted island. Since the bomb he used was low in destructive power, it didn't kill the woman. Instead, it blew off her hand. However, the chip also fell off, and he successfully left the island. In the end, Keiko warned Himiko that the real test would come when they collected six chips. Afterwards, Himiko told Ryota about the woman's experience. When he learned that a helicopter would come for pickup, Ryota immediately thought of collecting all eight chips, and then hijacking the plane with a bomb, so they could all leave. Next, the two prepared to say goodbye to Keiko. On the other hand, it seemed that Haikai's wounds had been well bandaged. The person who helped Haikai was the same doctor that Keiko had talked about, at that moment, Ryota returned to find Haikai but discovered that a stranger was also present. Ryota became instantly alert and asked the stranger to leave. The man quickly introduced himself as a doctor named Yamasa and assured them that he meant no harm. He had also been the one to bandage Haikai's wound. After some conversation, 
Ryota let down his guard and invited Yamasa to join them in their plan to leave the island. Just then, another airdrop was deployed outside. The three of them prepared to collaborate and compete for the supplies. However, due to the strong ocean breeze, the airdrop was drifting towards the sea. The three of them followed closely. Meanwhile, many competitors emerged from the jungle. As the airdrop was about to fall into the sea, both of them jumped at the same time. But neither of them managed to grab any supplies. Ryota immediately took out a bomb and threw it at the other party. The bombs collided in the air and exploded. On the other side, Himiko was attacked by another woman who kicked her to the ground. Himiko fell into unconsciousness, and the woman pulled out a bomb, throwing it directly at her before leaving the scene. Meanwhile, Ryota slowly regained consciousness and noticed that the airdrop was now in Yamasa's hands. At the same time, the tattooed man pulled out a bomb and threw it directly at Yamasa. Yamasa had to make a choice and ended up abandoning the supplies. The two of them then engaged in another intense struggle. Ryota successfully caught the falling supply crate. Just then, a bomb fell from the sky, engulfing Ryota in flames. It was the white-haired man from the mountain who had thrown the bomb. The tattooed man leaped over the firewall and kicked Ryota to the ground. He then picked up the supply crate and jumped into the sea, crossing the firewall. Ryota followed closely and jumped into the water as well. On the other side, Himiko didn't die from the explosion. In the last moment, she regained consciousness and threw the bomb away. Holding an electric shock gun, Himiko charged towards the woman. However, the woman was agile and not only kicked away the gun but also tightly restrained Himiko's body, attempting to strangle her to death. Suddenly, a bomb was thrown, and it was Yamasa. Then he told Himiko that he was lucky to be here in time. Otherwise, Himiko would have been in danger. Himiko knew that this guy wasn't trustworthy either. He wanted to kill her and that woman together. Enemies were everywhere, and the only person she could trust now was Ryota. Meanwhile, after a fierce battle, Ryota could only watch as the tattooed man took the supplies and left. Himiko and Yamasa arrived shortly after, upon learning that Ryota had failed to get the supply crate. Yamasa pretended that it was alright, but internally he cursed Ryota as useless. Himiko didn't care about the supplies, she was afraid of losing Ryota. The next day, Haikai's condition worsened, and he needed immediate medication. Himiko remembered that Keiko had a pharmaceutical storage area, so the three of them decided to go there together. Ryota and Himiko walked ahead, and Himiko told Ryota about Yamasa's suspicious behavior and how he had almost blown her up. However, Ryota didn't seem concerned and thought Himiko was being overly sensitive. The three of them arrived at Keiko's residence, but Ryota and Himiko didn't want Yamasa to know about Keiko's presence, they suggested splitting up to search. Unbeknownst to them, Yamasa was very familiar with the area as he had been there six months ago. He knew the exact location of the pharmaceutical storage and didn't want to waste any more time. He wanted to eliminate Ryota and Himiko there and then. Ryota came here at the right time. Yamasa handed the suitcase filled with medication to Ryota, instructing him to take good care of it, and then prepared to leave. Himiko was desperately trying to get here. She looks panicked and shouted for Ryota to quickly drop the suitcase. Just then, Yamasa pressed the remote control switch of the bomb. It turns out that just now, Himiko approached Keiko and explained the reason for her visit. Keiko showed Himiko the location of the drugstore. She saw Yamasa loading the medicine. So Yamasa is the man who put her in this situation. Knowing what she knows about Yamasa, Yamasa would kill them soon. Himiko desperately rushed towards them, but it was too late. Ryota's death was unbearable for her. After disposing of Ryota, Yamasa wouldn't spare Himiko either and quickly found her. He then threw a bomb towards her. At that moment, Himiko wanted to die. Unexpectedly, the bomb bounced off of her. Yamasa was dumbfounded by this scene. The bomb fell to the ground without exploding. He didn't get the right to use Ryota's bomb. That means Ryota didn't die. It turned out that upon hearing Himiko's warning, Ryota swiftly dropped the suitcase. At that moment, Yamasa was out of bombs. Because all his bombs were used to set up traps, he had no choice but to run away. Naturally, Ryota wouldn't let him go. After the explosion, Yamasa was already dying. Just as Ryota was about to finish him off, Keiko stopped him. She's going to take care of this scum herself. Meanwhile, Haikai ultimately chose to betray them. Long-term loneliness and the toxicity caused by his injuries finally led to his complete breakdown, even causing him to hallucinate. In his delusion, the images of his wife and child deepened, his longing for his family. So, he thought of a shortcut to leave the deserted island. 
He already had two chips in his hand. And with Ryota's three, if he killed them both, he would directly have seven. In this way, he could return home to see his loved ones. By the time Ryota and the others returned, he had already hidden in the distant bushes and targeted them. Ryota realized that it was a tracking microbomb, which made him immediately think of Haikai. Fortunately, the power of this bomb was extremely small. It only injured Ryota's leg, but also made him lose his ability to move. With another bomb approaching, Himiko slowly stepped out and grabbed the bomb with her hand. Indeed, she had guessed correctly. This kind of bomb would only explode when close to the targeted person. Himiko resolutely stood in front of Ryota, and then Haikai released another bomb. At this moment, Ryota suddenly realized something. He jumped up and grabbed the bomb. As expected, this time Haikai's target was Himiko. Having his scheme exposed left Haikai completely panicked, and his position was scanned by Ryota using a radar. Ryota just wanted Haikai to come back, because they had said they would leave together. However, Haikai accidentally fell down the slope. As Ryota's call came closer, he pulled out his last bomb, ready to fight to death. Ryota's voice rang out again, apologizing for previously ignoring his feelings. Ryota's words made him feel ashamed, and at this moment, a group of giant lizards surrounded him. Haikai suddenly felt a sense of relief. Perhaps this was what they called retribution, but all he wanted was to return and reunite with his family. Haikai's death brought Ryota immense grief. After all, it was Haikai who had been with him all this time. They had promised to go back together, which made Ryota blame himself heavily. Seeing Ryota's grief-stricken appearance, Himiko seemed to make a decision and took out three chips, which she had found from Haikai earlier, along with the three they had collected before. They now had a total of six. Adding her own, Ryota could go back. So, Himiko suggested that Ryota kill her, because Ryota was her hope to survive. As long as Ryota could leave here and live a good life, it didn't matter what became of her. Ryota angrily told her to stop joking. He couldn't leave Himiko behind, because he knows that Himiko was his wife in the game. As the two embraced, the curtain fell on this story. Thank you for watching, I'll continue to share good dramas.